And I'd like to welcome onto the stage um, Professor David, sorry, Professor Peter Elias um, from the University of Warwick. So Peter is a professor at the Institute for Employment Research at the university there and has developed methods for the measurement analysis of labour market dynamics and he's very interested in the classification of labour market activities. He's going to be talking to us about the national data strategy and retailers' data. Welcome. Thank you very much. Um, what many people don't know about me is that my first name is David, and I just, uh, <laughs> I wonder what database you've accessed <laughs> when you made that slip just then. <laughs> okay, uh, we've heard a lot during the course of today about the uh, ESRC and about retail uh, data, data sets and analysis based on such data. Um, and I, I think it's become evident uh, that there is a, a tremendous interest, not just from academics in engaging with uh, these sorts of data, but in terms of uh, the, those organisations and individuals within them who are the producers of, the, of these data and the users of data to get others involved in a kind of external, not just validation, but uh, increasing the, the, the viability, the validity of, of this information. But you might ask, where does all this fit in a kind of uh, grander plan of, of what we're trying to do? Um, and my role since uh, 2004 has to uh, shepherd uh, an activity which is known as the, the, the National Data Strategy. And in fact, um, it, it's got a bigger name than that, National Strategy for Data Resources for the, the Social Sciences. That's, that's what it is. And it's, it's not owned by the ESRC. It's, it's, uh, it's, it has the, uh, a, a stewardship which comes from uh, a committee called the UK Data Forum. And the UK Data Forum consists of uh, people who have uh, expertise or people who are uh, involved in the funding of the development of data sets or people who are major users of large-scale data sets. Uh, and they're typically from most of the large government departments, but also uh, those organisations uh, funding uh, research in, in the social sciences. And I think we've seen also that um, what we mean by the social sciences is, is quite broad here. Uh, it's not just about uh, economics and sociology and the behavioural sciences, but it's about the way in which uh, th these disciplinary areas combine and interact with other disciplines and the way in which uh, social economic uh, behaviour can help us to understand what else is going on in the world. Um, and the common currency that we share, the point where we join up, is on data. Um, and big data, of course, particularly nowadays, uh, is of, of great interest to, uh, to social scientists. So when we make this plan, um, we have to think about what kind of science, scientific investigation we're going to be involved in in the future and what kind of data we will need then to help us to inform those scientific investigations. Um, just looking backwards, I've been doing this for eight years and over that time what, what has the uh, ESRC and the UK Data Forum uh, achieved? And the answer is quite a lot. It's slow going in some areas um, but we've, um, you've heard mention about uh, understanding Society, and that's the short name for the uh, UK Household um, uh, Longitudinal Panel Study. Um, and it's the largest in the world that we now have here in the UK. We're also on the point of starting the largest birth cohort study, which will run over 2013, 2014, and we'll be tracking uh, 120,000 children uh, over their lifetimes. We've set up um, new data access facilities and we've revamped existing facilities. Um, uh, some of you may know about the way in which these facilities have now been combined into the UK data service, which Matthew Woolard uh, manages and directs. Uh, and of course, we've got, um, we've got um, uh, systems in place now for um, providing information about administrative data and for dealing with uh, highly disclosive data in a secure environment. 
On the kind of political front, we've been involved in um, sharpening and uh, harmonising governance arrangements uh, between studies, particularly uh, trying to get this bridge between the medical and the social sciences. And we've been doing a lot of work to strengthen our international research resources um, and getting better research links and knowledge about data, both within the UK, shared by others, and for us to share data from outside the UK. So, been quite active. But what do we now have to achieve? The National Data Strategy is published as a short plan. Uh, two have been published so far. Uh, those two have each covered uh, three-year periods. Um, the first was started in 2006 to 2009, then 2010 to 2012, and we're about now to publish one covering 2013 for a five-year period. And what do we hope to achieve within that five-year period? Part of this is crystal ball gazing. We might get it wrong, but at least we're trying to think ahead and look at what it is that we need. We clearly, and we've had this, we've heard this uh, many times today, we clearly need better research access to administrative data. Um, how we define administrative data is an interesting issue. Is it data produced by the public sector? Uh, if a private sector organisation takes over public sector activities, is that still an administrative data set? Uh, what's private, what's public? Uh, and, and how those are defined is going to be a very uh, important issue for us to address here. But for a start, at least, there's general agreement that there needs to be um, better ways in which we can achieve linkage between data produced by and held by the Department for Work and Pensions, uh, HM Revenue and Customs, Department for Education, Ministry of Justice, the devolved administrations and the data sets that they hold, and so on and so on. Um, and, and that's going to be quite difficult to achieve. Um, there's a the task force that's now been uh, investigating and will make proposals uh, next month about how we might seek to improve uh, our access to administrative data and to facilitate data linkage for research purposes. We are keen also to develop new European-wide data resources. Um, there are many activities taking place in this space at the moment um, and bringing those together and um, promoting areas where uh, they can be improved is going to be quite important. So our participation in the kind of European research space is important. Um, we're also uh, involved in now, and the ESRC will be more involved in the future, in international cooperation over the development of new forms of data for research. And this might be social networking data, or it might come from uh, internet transactions or whatever. There's a tremendous amount of data out there which has got research value, which often knows no boundaries because that's the nature of the internet. And international cooperation in terms of how we might capture, make use of, develop, uh, and use data to inform research is, I think, going to be an important area. We have earmarked um, um, activities which relate to data resources for what we call epigenetic studies. And this is where uh, we've got information about the, the genome, uh, genetic information, uh, and what we're interested in is what's called genetic expression, the way in which uh, genes are turned on or triggered or not uh, by environmental influences. And that's a very uh, up-and-coming area of research. And you'll see I've put down the bottom of this slide improved use for research of data from organisations. What do we mean by that? It strikes me that we've done a lot over the last eight or ten years or so to improve our information about individuals and families, households and communities. And if you look at where we've made major improvements over the last five years, it's been in these areas particularly, in terms of the kind of data we have, um, whether they're longitudinal information or birth cohort or other, other kind of cohort, uh, ways in which we can link between cohorts, ways in which we can gain access to uh, information which is cross-sectional, labour force survey, census, etc. We've made great improvements uh, over the, the last 10 years. But when it comes to organisations, 
I don't think we have quite the same picture here, or at least we've not coordinated our activities sufficiently well. When you think about it, apart from those people who uh, operate in a self-employed capacity, all of our economic activity takes place in and through organisations. And these organisations vary in type, in size, in structure, uh, in many different ways, and I, it, it, that kind of makes them difficult to understand. But we've got quite a lot of activities where we've uh, already got research groups who are active and are using specific resources. In terms of official statistics, the annual survey of hours and earnings, the annual business inquiry, the interdepartmental business register, these are all maintained by the Office for National Statistics, their official statistics, therefore, um, they are very important sources of information about organisations and the people within them. Then we've got various surveys, which are undertaken by different agencies, bodies, sometimes academic, sometimes um, uh, uh, official agencies, like the um, Workplace Employment Survey, uh, now in its sixth incarnation, uh, surveys that have been running for uh, at least 20 years um, and due to the next survey due to be released uh, very soon. The National Employer Skills Survey run by the Commission um, for uh, Employment and Skills. Uh, the Community Innovation Survey, uh, many surveys conducted by uh, HMRC. And then there's other ad hoc surveys, not kind of regular but just kind of one-off surveys that happen from time to time. Notably, for example, the skills surveys. There are many industry-led inquiries. Uh, CBI runs industrial trends and investment intentions. We've got the retail databases that we've heard so much about today. We've got major financial databases, like FAME, for example, uh, which collect and process information, uh, financial information, which is publicly available, and sometimes uh, that which is not publicly available, from, from organisations. And last but not least, we've got administrative data sources on organisations like VAT returns, corporation tax, income tax, uh, health and safety information, and so on. With all of these groups, there are often research interests. Sometimes there are user groups associated with them. And it seems to me it should be fairly straightforward, but <laughs> clearly it's going to be very difficult indeed, to kind of bring all these interests together in ways which is productive. And I think that there can be enormous spin-off gained by uh, bringing people together who've got knowledge of data of one kind about organisations with people who've got data of other kinds. Sometimes it's data about organisations, sometimes it's data which is created by organisations and relates to their customer database, for example. So how can we take this forward? Well, uh, it's going to require what, what I call a step-by-step -step approach, rather like we're seeing with the Retail Data Navigators Scheme, which is a first small step in terms of developing bridges and links between the academic community, researchers particularly within the academic community, and those people who have research interests in those data who are based within the organisations that create them. So a slow uh, but steady step-by-step -step approach, but essentially a planned approach is, is important. We need some kind of broader forum for discussion between data holders and potential research users. Now, there are groups like the Statistics Users Group, for example, which could take on this function, or there are organisations which are more associated with groups more associated with data production, like the UK Data Forum, but none of them really has this function of bringing together different research interests, different data types, um, and uh, different uh, data holders, uh, data producers, in, in, in a way which I, I think can lead to a more joined up approach to our understanding about uh, organizations. We can only do this if there is sufficient funding for a wider program of research to promote access to various types of data. And I think uh, this is something that we'll take forward. We're having a meeting tomorrow of the 
Administrative Data Task Force, this body that's been talked about that's trying to progress access to administrative data. Um, and it certainly will be within the agenda of um, a proposal which is coming out from the Administrative Data Task Force, which is to have something called Administrative Data Research Centres. If these are established, then I think it will be quite important that they take on, as part of their remit, uh, ways in which they could help us to improve our understanding of organisations and how they operate, how they interact with society, how they create economic wealth and how they lead to economic growth and social cohesion. Thank you.